Jimmy, obviously Velvet Research has got a wee bit of a history now, but I understand when you came to New Zealand in 1981, you were pretty much starting from scratch? There was, there'd been some research had been done in uh, Asia, uh, some in North America and some in Europe, but really it hadn't addressed what were New Zealand's uh, problems as it were, what we were trying to achieve. Now remember 30 years ago the industry had only been going for about um, 10 years or so, there uh, weren't that many deer farms and it was all a bit new for everybody. And uh, coming in, uh, Pete Fennessy had, had given it a start with some of the nutrition research that he'd done. But fundamentally, somebody had to come in and see, see what was there in terms of antler mechanisms. So uh, I started a program of work at that time <coughs> with the team at Invermay. And uh, that developed into uh, interest in um, composition, uh, which of course was of direct benefit to the marketplace. So it wasn't; a, it was never a question of one project starting and, and then stopping and another one. It was all very, very much continuous. And <coughs> uh, in about 1990, um, the then Game Industry Board came and said to us, "Well, look, uh, New Zealand velvet." is poorly appraised in the Asian market um, but we don't know anything about New Zealand velvet at all, we don't know anything about its composition or, or, or any attributes of it. We need to do some fundamental stuff to just to see, see what's there. So <clears throat> um, at the time Pete and I uh, started a programme of work looking at uh, antler composition uh, which then grew into efficacy studies um, and then grew into uh, more work uh, around um, what were the attributes of velvet, what were the specific uh, chemical compositions, what varied chemical composition of velvet, and then trying to compare with the marketplace to see where New Zealand could have a critical advantage. Is that our critical advantage is consistent quality uh, and uh, being able to demonstrate that consistent quality because we'll always outdo the, uh, the competitor in these particular areas. That foundation of science actually came from that all of the research that we did on composition was always agreed with the industry. There's been a little bit of a, a sort of a pause, I guess, people might perceive in, in velvet research recently, but there's still a couple of things going on. Can you just bring us up to yeah. that, the isotope and, and um, repair? What somebody showed um, many years ago was that the abundance of these small isotope signature changes um, is, differs from place to place. And if you take two, um, say carbon and sulphur or carbon and oxygen, uh, or even three, and then you look at the proportion of that stable isotope uh, versus the, the, the natural, as it were, the normal, then um, you can with great precision in many cases determine exactly where that particular uh, product actually originated from. This is used forensically. So, uh, in other words, a body uh, washes up ashore, um, and this is a live, live example actually, in the English Channel. Couldn't find out who the, uh, no way of determining where the person came from, but they actually used the isotopic signature, and they actually located the person, and the person it came from an African village, and they actually found the African village that the person was from, and they were identified that particular way. So what we're talking about here is taking the isotopic signature for New Zealand velvet, which will be absolutely different from anywhere in Asia, uh, and then using that not only potentially to determine New Zealand, but also Canterbury, Otago, Waikato, wherever it is, which part of New Zealand it actually came from. That's pretty, pretty powerful stuff. And then repair acts, I guess, is the other yes. one. Um, but a commitment to it. <coughs> um, and we're in the final stages of arranging a clinical trial. Uh, seem like I've been saying that for a couple of years, but it's a big uh, hurdle. We'll, 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 it's a big hurdle. Velvet's an unusual product, as you well know. There's issues with it. It's an animal base. There's a lot of things to think through. Uh, but we're working uh, with um, burn patients uh, in Perth in Western Australia and uh, we're particularly interested in using um, a, a deer velvet product. Uh, it's not exactly powder, it's, a, it's actually an extract product uh, and we'll be not treating the burn itself but many people who have serious burns require a skin graft of course and um, the, uh, they require it's a very very even wound and it's very consistent and most people have two or three of them on their arms or parts of their body, wherever it is. We'll be able to use each person as their own control and <coughs> um, on this, the, 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 where the skin has been removed uh, to treat the burn. So it's not the burn itself, it's the actual graft. 
and <clears throat> it's predominantly a safety trial because it's, it's, a, it's a topical um, treatment rather than an oral treatment and uh, because I've, I'm very happy with the preliminary research I've done um, using animal models I'm pretty confident this is actually going to work. That's where we are now. What are the areas um, that you see the potential for further well, research? I, I mean uh, <clears throat> I, I, I strongly feel that the pet business is is quite a good opportunity it's for us. Osteoarthritis. Uh, osteoarthritis, um, general well-being in dogs, um, health, health of dogs. Um, we have an aging population as, as we know and uh, the opportunity for using velvet potentially to um, improve quality of life in, in senior people and potentially cut down medical expenses um, going forward I think is something that uh, deserves a look at. It's a, it's a piece of work I've actually wanted to do for uh, several years now and uh, we've never really had the opportunity to do it. But I think that uh, looking for a market which um, doesn't discriminate between ethnicity, in other words, it would work in Asia, it would work in North America, it would work here, uh, and also looking for a demanding market that's looking for some form of treatment, I think is a useful thing.